Good morning, folks. We've got some outstanding news articles, a space weather update, and some government scientists about to get a Will Smith Level 9 slap. The last 24 hours on the sun continued eruptive activity on the north but pulled a new card from its sleeve. Activity in motion at the southern active region. No CMEs but violent coronal plasma motion and growing sunspots behind the larger lead umbra. Spots are peppering a large portion of the sun at this time and they will be monitored for flare activity. Solar wind at Earth actually amplified its kinetic pressure yesterday, but its magnetism flipped to something easily deflected and we came out of the geomagnetic storm conditions with only minor reverberations continuing. On the X-ray flux chart, you can see the X-class flare from two days ago and a near X-class yesterday. The right side spike was an M9.6 solar flare and it was the flash top right as the southern active region went nuts to the south. Now, folks, we saw this yesterday, the NASA Enlil spiral for the first one, the X-class event, and it will arrive tonight or tomorrow. But as for the second solar flare and CME, all we've got is Stereo A, showing at least a reasonable chance for the second one to be right on the heels of the first one. SOHO coronagraphs are missing data at the key period we would need to confirm Earth-directed eruption. NASA didn't update the second CME on their Enlil spiral, and on NOAA's Enlil spiral, well, it's showing those previous impacts, updating to include neither of the two most recent events. Now don't worry, folks. The screen is black and it's supposed to be. I'm speaking to NASA and NOAA officials right now. When you basically get two X-class flare and CME events in back-to-back -back days, it's not the time to take a day off. Even with SOHO not updating, there is more than enough to make a guess. And as for the first one, the X-Flare and CME, you've got to be kidding me, Noah. What is this? Was Thursday, March 31st some holiday you got to take off? Anyway, first impact will be either tonight or tomorrow, and the second one, if it is coming at Earth, would be tomorrow night or Sunday morning. Eyes open for incoming space weather. Let's do some article science, starting with Chandra and a deep look into the spiderweb galaxy and its surrounding features. The science goal was to determine the rate of X-ray production at certain distant galaxies, but the eye candy, and seeing other wavelengths of light than the visible, is always a treat. This was a treat as well, but only if you aren't paid to plug global warming propaganda. This visualization of the CO2 drop during the lockdowns is pretty, but it's also the exact data set that showed the huge drop in pollution and yet a nearly impossible jump upward in temperature. Again, Pollution goes down, temperature goes up, just like that paper we saw last week where they were arguing it's not our pollution reduction that caused the heating, it's the rest of the world's pollution reduction that caused the heating, and everyone else is like, uh, what? Yeah. Lastly, folks, no scolding or jokes or anything else here, but another aspect of solar forcing gone under the radar. At least they gave this one a cool name. Super fast electron precipitation. How fast? So fast it shatters the alleged upper limit the theoretical funnel restricting that particle bombardment of the atmosphere. This is not only going to be amplified by Earth's weakening magnetic field, but this manner of energy injection into the Earth is a cherry on top of a Sunday of solar forcing, still knocking at the climate door, asking to come in. We greatly appreciate your support. Folks, our climate textbook is somewhat more serious and complex than the disaster book, but the professors like it. It's also at otf.cells.com with our other books and gear. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.